Today on The Hookup, I'm going to show you how I built this set of motorized, adjustable height workbenches that lets me have a 6-foot outfeed for my table saw, a miter saw station long enough to cut 12-foot boards, and a mobile base for my CNC machine, while still being able to park two cars in my slightly undersized two-car garage. This whole thing started a few months back because FlexiSpot sent me a message asking if I wanted to check out their new heavy duty dual motor standing desk frame. And I happened to be reading that email with my daughter looking over my shoulder. I clicked the link and I played the video and she said, dad, that looks awesome. But I told her that we had no use for it because everyone in the family already has a desk. To which she said, well, what about your workbench? Hmm, yeah, what about my workbench? See, when I moved into this house, I had a few small projects that needed to get done immediately. So the first order of business was to throw together a quick workbench. And the one that I made turned out to be really terrible. I made it tall enough to store my table saw underneath, which was too tall to work at comfortably. I put a miter saw on top, but with the refrigerator on one side and the water heater on the other, there was no room for the actual material. So as a result, in the nine years since I built this workbench, I've probably only used it for real work about a dozen times. And for most projects, I end up sitting on the garage floor while the workbench collects junk and acts as a glorified shelf. Does this sound familiar to any of you? It also happened to be that last week was spring break 2022 and my daughter and I have a tradition of doing projects together whenever there's a break from school. So her idea of adjustable height workbenches seemed like a great choice. And let me tell you, it actually worked out even better than I expected. So first, let's look at a couple features of the FlexiSpot frames that made them such a good fit for workbenches. There are two variations of the frame. You've got the E3 and the E7. The E3 is a two-stage design, so its height adjustments go from 28 inches minimum to 46 inches maximum, while the E7 has a three-stage lifter that goes from 24 inches to 50 inches. And those extra four inches of travel on the low end made a huge difference for my table saw use case, so I went with the E7s. Both of the models have adjustable width, which you can set from a minimum of 43 inches up to a maximum of 67 inches, and the bases are about 27 inches deep. The sleeves on the legs are inverted, which is really good in a workshop because that means that they're less likely for sawdust to get into the lifting mechanism, which as I said is dual motor and can lift 220 pounds on the E3 model and 275 pounds on the E7. The control panel lets you adjust the height in tenths of an inch, and it's got three preset positions that are stored even after a power loss, so you only need to actually plug in the benches when you want to change the height. As far as safety, both of the models have anti-collision with three sensitivity levels, or you can just turn that off completely. The FlexiSpot frame comes with leveling feet, and there are optional casters available on their website, but I wanted something a little more heavy duty, so I opted for a set of leveling foot caster combinations that not only let me make micro adjustments to the height, but are also much sturdier than normal locking casters. Another important design feature for me was the fact that the frames don't have any bottom cross beams, which means it's easy to put shelving and storage underneath and still be able to roll the benches in and out of position. One thing that I would do differently if I was gonna do it again would be to make one bench wide enough to slide over the other for storage purposes. But as you can see in my setup, that's not really necessary. The frames come in a few pieces and they went together without any issues in less than 15 minutes each with pretty clear instructions. And after that, it was just time to build the tops. My overall idea was pretty simple. Two adjustable height sections on casters that can be moved easily around the garage. The first section houses my DeWalt job site saw, and the second bench moves around and adjusts its height to support whichever tool I'm using on the main bench, which would be an outfeed table when I'm using my table saw, and a miter saw station when I'm using the miter saw. If I don't need the outfeed table or any extra support for my miter saw, then I can spread the two benches apart and have access to both tools at the same time. Now, in order for the table saw section to work and be safe, the structure needed to be sturdy enough to rip sheet goods without tipping over. And so far, from what I can tell, it performs significantly better than the mobile stand from DeWalt, and even better than my previous table saw that had a built-in stand. Ripping sheet goods is surprisingly simple, and I was even able to clean up the edges of a 12-foot 2x4 without it falling off the back of the table. I will say that at their maximum height and loaded up, the FlexiSpot frames can get a little bit shaky when you roll them around the garage, but at minimum height, they are super solid and have basically zero flex or wobble. With the E7 model at its lowest setting, plus my leveling casters and a single sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood, the top of the table saw is right at 40.5 inches, which is just about the perfect working height for someone my size. 
Now, while I do love the adjustable height on this section of the workbench for storage and utility reasons that I'll talk about later, in hindsight, I probably could have used a fixed base on this section, which would have saved some money. However, the adjustable height on the second workbench is a game changer, and I'm not sure why I haven't seen more people making these things. Like I said before, the FlexiSpot control unit adjusts in tenths of an inch, and it saves those exact presets, so with a quick touch of the button, I can go from a comfortable height for storage and general use, to an exact height for my table saw outfeed, and then with another preset, I can go to the perfect height to support material on my miter saw. Now, because this second section gets moved around and adjusted a lot more often, I wanted to see if I could add a built-in power source for the lifting mechanism. And I was hoping that this battery bank on steroids called the OmniCharge 20 Plus would fit the bill since in addition to USB-C and an AC outlet, it also has a programmable DC output from its barrel jack. Unfortunately, it seems like the FlexiSpot desks are a little too power hungry, at least for this model of the OmniCharge, which can only do 100 watts on the AC outlet and 100 watts on the DC port, which works fine for lowering the bench, but with any extra weight when lifting, the power draw goes over 100 watts and it makes the FlexiSpot control panel throw an error. There is a larger OmniCharge called the Ultimate that I'm sure could provide enough juice, but I'm not sure if being plug free is worth another $400, especially since the benches only need to be plugged in when you want to change the height. I did see some other reviews that said the desk needs to go through a homing sequence anytime it loses power, but that just doesn't seem to be the case as long as it completes the movement before you unplug it. If it does lose power in the middle of the movement, then you need to recalibrate by going to its lowest setting, but it seems pretty rare that that would happen in the first place, and it's not that big of an inconvenience if it does. After I finished with the workbenches, I also took the opportunity to do a little bit of garage remodeling, and I got to experience what the new benches can do, and it was even better than I had imagined. It was so nice to not be sitting on the floor and to be able to easily move the benches around, and I had enough support to break down sheet goods and handle long boards all by myself. But the benefits of the adjustable height benches don't stop when you finish your project. I mentioned earlier that my old workbench was a cluttered mess, and a major reason for that was that with my giant car in the garage, I couldn't get to any of the storage on the right side of the bench, and I could only pull out my main drawer a few inches before it hit the front of my car. That meant that if I pulled a tool out of the drawer when my car was in the driveway, and then I pulled my car back in the garage, then that tool's new storage location was going to be on top of the bench. But now that I can easily adjust the height of the whole bench, I can get the drawers above the hood of the car, and as a result, the tools go back in the drawers. Or at least that's the hope. Speaking of drawers, I'm using Alexander Chappelle's 3D printed organizational bins that let me pull out a few sets of screws that I'm using with a project, and then easily drop them back into place when I'm done. Again, hopefully avoiding that workbench clutter that seems to be inevitable between projects. I also mentioned that I could have used a fixed base on my table saw section, but the other benefit of this adjustable height is that I'm able to store the table saw and miter saw up and out of the way, since even though they're two of my favorite and most useful tools, I really only use them when I'm doing a medium to large size project, and this way I can have easier access to the other tools that I use daily or weekly. And while we're talking about storing things up and out of the way, there are two more tricks for these adjustable height benches. First, I love my CNC machine, but it does take up a lot of room, so I store mine above the garage door with a hoist. Previously, I used removable black iron pipe as legs, but not only were they really shaky, but the whole process of lowering and setting up the CNC was inconvenient and time intensive. Now, all I need to do is wheel my FlexiSpot workbench under the hoist, raise the bench, and disconnect the supports, which cuts my setup time at least in half and will ultimately result in me getting more use out of my CNC. The second trick is probably not one that's sanctioned by FlexiSpot, but it works too well not to mention. My garage attic is where I store everything from a holiday light show, and some of the boxes can get pretty heavy. The storage bin that holds the Megatree, for instance, weighs about 75 pounds, and it's really not fun to take up and down on a ladder. But with the adjustable height workbenches, I can lower them all the way down, put whatever I need to store in the attic on top, and then raise it up to a point where I can grab it from inside the attic, which is much safer than pushing it up a ladder. Now, these benches aren't gonna be a perfect fit for everybody. If you've got a whole workshop and plenty of room for a 400 pound workbench and tools with stands, then these benches probably don't make any sense for you. If you're a hand tools and bench dogs kind of woodworker, then you're gonna need a heavier, sturdier bench. But as a weekend warrior power tool user, I really couldn't be happier with how these turned out. And even with a price tag of around $500 per bench for all the supplies, it was well worth it to be able to complete a project without sitting on the floor for the first time in 10 years. If you're interested in checking out the exact products that I used in this video, I've got links for everything down in the description. And if you've got a specific question that I didn't answer, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you ASAP. 
Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.